What's going on on my YouTube videos? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And welcome to another installment in my Celebrating Disney series where each week I review and celebrate all things Disney regardless of quality, animated, or live action under the main Disney banner. I got a live action review this week and in today's video I'll be taking a look at the 2003 coming of age comedy, Holes. Stanley's family is cursed with bad luck. Unfairly sentenced to months of detention at Camp Green Lake, Stanley and his campmates are forced by the warden to dig holes in order to build character. What they don't know, however, is that they are digging holes in order to search for a lost treasure hidden somewhere in the camp. So Holes was released in 2003. It is based on the young adult novel of the same name, a book that I did read in either my 5th or 6th grade class in elementary school. We read it together, so I'm very nostalgic and familiar with this book. And even the author who wrote the book actually wrote the screenplay for it, making it a pretty faithful adaptation of the book. The film was directed by Andrew Davis, who prior to directing Holes, directed 90s action films such as The Fugitive starring Harrison Ford and Under Siege starring Steven Seagal. It's crazy they got this guy to direct a Disney movie that's more of a coming of age story, but he got the job and this movie was a pretty modest hit at the box office. Critics dug it, audiences loved it. This film actually made an impact when it came out, and it's still a fondly remembered film to this day, especially uh, to the kids like me who grew up with this movie. And I do have a soft spot for this movie. Even though I've only seen the film, I think maybe two or three times in my life, I saw it uh, after I re read the book. Uh, I rented the movie, and me and my family watched it, and I loved it then, and I thought it was a good adaptation of the book. And I watched it again one time, I caught it on TV, and enjoyed it then too. And so re-watching it again on Disney+, Plus, to me, Holes is one of these movies where, even though I've only seen the film a couple of times in my life, I still have this rich nostalgia for the movie. It's like every time I come back to seeing this movie, it's like, oh yeah, this movie exists, it's better than I remember it being, and it's actually a very sweet story, which is... Really crazy to say because the main story of this film is so bizarre. You have these kids who are sent to this random camp and they are forced to dig holes. That's a little bit cruel and there's like no real questioning behind this camp. They just go there and these kids just dig random holes. And that seems a little bit inhumane, but that actually does happen in this movie. And... Uh, you're meant to question why this camp even exists, but you just roll with it because it's such a bizarre story that's pretty wildly entertaining. There is some dark humor in the middle of it and a really intriguing mystery behind like this family curse and there's like this uh, outlaw bandit type character in the past who robs and kisses people after she kills them and there's so many like interesting layers upon layers upon this story along with the main character Stanley and where he fits in all this and you know I had fun with it I enjoyed seeing these characters grow and bond these kids in the camp who you know have their rivalries they have their friction but they do have a deep respect for one another the more they learn about each other in the camp I especially love the main bond between the main character Stanley and there's a character he befriends named Zero and they end up forming like a brotherly bond throughout the course of this movie and it becomes a very sweet story that is pretty enjoyable to watch. Uh, this film has a pretty good all-star cast in the film. The kids in the movie are mainly comprised of unknowns. I don't think any of these kid actors went anywhere after this movie I honestly don't know but the main kid Stanley was played by an actor you may know of uh Shia LaBeouf does that ring a bell oh yeah the kid who grew up to be in those Transformers movies and he kind of did some weird stuff afterwards but uh all that aside I think he's a pretty good actor I really like him in this movie and this was like the first big movie role he was in I know he did some Disney Channel stuff at the same time he did that show Even Stevens but 
I was first familiar with Shia LaBeouf by watching uh, Holes and then the Transformers movies and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Those are like my three introductions to Shia LaBeouf. And considering some people think he's a joke of an actor, he is pretty good in this movie. Like, you definitely feel the frustration of his character because, you know, his character and his family is in a string of bad luck. And you just want to see him, you know, do something good in his life. He's unfairly framed for this crime, and he's sent to this camp for no reason. And you just really want him to have something good come upon him. And it's fun seeing him go on this journey, and I love the interaction that he has with these characters. And he actually gives a sincere, genuine performance. In fact, I think my two favorite Shia LaBeouf performances are this and his role in the Peanut Butter Falcon, which came out uh, a couple years ago, which is a fantastic under-the-radar movie that not too many people saw. It was actually really good. On, but the supporting cast, that's what makes this film work. you got people like Sigourney Weaver as the warden, who is hilariously over-the-top in this movie. John Voigt, who puts on this foghorn, leghorn, southern drawl, Texas accent... And goes wild with it. It's easily the funniest performance I've seen him give in any movie. I've always been a fan of John Voight in any movie he's in. But yeah, here he goes really crazy in this movie and I love it. I think mean, I'd love to see him and Daniel Craig and Knives Out like have this Southern Drawl face off. That would be like the best movie ever. <laughs> you got like Tim Blake Nelson in here, Patricia Arquette as uh, the female bandit from some of the flashback sequences. It was fun seeing Henry Winkler, yes, Stefan's A, yes, uh, Stanley's dad. That was a fun appearance. And even Urfa Kit has a pretty memorable small part that was uh, really enjoyable. And it's fun seeing her in live action roles. You know, I associate her best as Yzma in The Emperor's New Groove. Pull the lever, crunk. Yeah, I'm never going to let that one go. Yeah, Holes is a really enjoyable movie. Not without its flaws, though. I think my two biggest issues with the movie, there's way too many conveniences in the plot, especially characters' relationships with other characters and how they connect with characters of the past. The more the story rolls about, it is a little bit eye-rolling, but it's still a little bit fulfilling and satisfying at the same time in a weird way because I like all these characters and I want to see satisfaction with these characters after what they've been through. So it's a little bit cheap and it's a little bit cloying, but you know, it's still fun and I did enjoy these characters. So I, I guess I just have to accept some of the weird conveniences that this movie has, but it is there and it is a little bit slightly annoying. My other big issue is some of the CGI has not aged well. The movie does involve poisonous lizards in the plot, and some shots involve CGI, and yeah, the CGI is not that good. It almost looks made for TV level CGI than a movie made in 2003. Clearly, Disney was investing more with those CGI pirate skeletons in the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie, which came out the same year, so... Yeah, it's clear where the money was on Disney in 2003. Yeah, the CGI in this is not that good. I will say Holes is a very enjoyable movie. Uh, it was fun revisiting it again on Disney+. Plus. It's a really fun coming-of-age story. Very sweet moments. There's dark undertones in this story between uh, some of the undercurrents of what actually goes on in this uh, detention camp and some of the flashbacks and why the town and the lake is dried up and uh, some of the dark secrets of the family curse and all that. There's a little bit of dark undercurrents in this story, and yet the movie is so fun to watch. I love seeing these characters bond and interact. It is riotously funny at times, especially with some of the supporting players like Sigourney Weaver and John Voight involved in this movie. And overall, it's such a blast to watch. It's a great family watch. I love that you know it has all these dark undercurrents, and it's still an enjoyable movie that the whole family can sit down and have a good laugh at. And plus, the soundtrack to this movie slaps so hard. Listen to this amazing bad boy of a song. Take it out, 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 take it. Take it out, out, out. Yeah, move over.
Hoover Eminem. This is the best rap song ever made. I'm just kidding. I love you, Eminem, but this is still an amazing, fun song. But two suits, two tokens in hand. I got no respect because I'm the new man. Oh, man, I can't get it out of my head after listening to this song. I haven't heard it in, like, 10, 15 years, and I still love it. Oh, man, I love that song, Dig It Up. It's so, so good. You got to go and dig those holes. Man, I'm tired. With broken hands and withered souls, emancipated from all you know. So yeah, Holes is a highly enjoyable movie. Definitely check it out on Disney Plus if you haven't seen it already. And at the end of the day, I'll be giving Holes a 4 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 79 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Holes as part of my Celebrating Disney series where each week I review and celebrate all things Disney, animated or live action, regardless of quality, under the main Disney banner. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're a fan of Disney like I am, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my Celebrating Disney playlist, where you can check out some of the other Disney reviews I've covered on my channel, whether animated or live action. If you're new to my Celebrating Disney series, each week I alternate between animated and live action reviews. My animated reviews I tackle in chronological order from the Disney animation canon to the Pixar films along with the direct-to-video sequels. My live action reviews I do in no particular order. They're freestyle and I leave room for requests. If there's any live action film or franchise you'd like me to tackle in my Celebrating Disney series going forward, Feel free to share your requests in the comments down below. And join me next week in my Celebrating Disney series as I'll be diving into my next animation review. And I'll be reviewing Pixar's film from 2003. And that is Finding Nemo. I'm excited to share my thoughts on this movie for my Celebrating Disney series. It's a movie I have a lot of deep respect for and I'm excited to share my thoughts on this movie. So be on the lookout for my review of Finding Nemo coming to the channel next week. But if you've seen Holes, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!